Welcome everyone to German Tool Reviews. Today we have a vintage Ghidorah Dremometer Type D torque wrench. I believe that Dremometer is the correct pronunciation even though I, I'm very tempted to call it a Dremometer. Even though this wrench is probably over 35 years old, it is still a model that Ghidorah makes and the general design has not changed much since then. To give you an idea on the scale of this wrench, it comes in at just over 800 millimeters or about 31.5 inches in length. What is amazing is that this isn't even close to the largest version of the Dremometer that Ghidorah makes, which is a Type F that comes with two extensions for a total length of 2.54 meters, or around 8 feet. The Type F is for torques up to 3,000 newton meters, or 2,200 foot-pounds. The Type D that I was able to pick up has a torque range of 140 to 760 newton meters, or 100 to 550 foot-pounds. It has a three-quarter inch drive. I was able to pick this up for about $50, which is quite a deal considering the list price on this model, brand new, is currently $2,100. The target market for this wrench is definitely for heavy industrial or military use. Of course, this unit needs some work before it can be put back into service. To adjust the torque value, you would simply pull out the handle at the end of the wrench and turn. This will move a red line on the built-in scales on the handle. The unit did come with a calibration sticker, all in German. I would doubt that this is a factory calibration sticker, so we know that the unit has been calibrated at least once. From what I could translate, it looks like the next calibration date was due in 72 months or in 1997. Therefore, I would guess that this was last calibrated in 1991. The serial number on the calibration sticker, 683, does match the serial number engraved on the wrench. Serial number 683 does seem quite low, so this definitely looks like it was an early production model. Considering that they've been making this model since the 1960s, I would guess that it was manufactured sometime before 1980. I tried very carefully to remove this sticker with the hopes that I could reattach it, but it was so old that it came off in flakes. The name Razul on the wrench is actually a subsidiary of Ghidorah, which stands for Richard Abraham Herder Solingen. This acquisition occurred in 1972, therefore we know the wrench must have been manufactured after that date in order to have the, both the Ghidorah and the Rasol brandings. The Herder family name is well known in Solingen for making high quality straight blade razors. Looking at the other markings on the nameplate, we see an arrow that indicates the direction of use for the wrench. This model only works in the clockwise direction and cannot be reversed. There are other models that will work in the counterclockwise direction for left-handed threaded fasteners. There is no ratcheting feature on this wrench, but you can buy a ratchet head especially used for the wrench to maintain the torque accuracy. Because this wrench is so old, and because it would be fun, I decided to go through this to ensure there are no issues with any of the internal mechanisms. There looks to be 4mm roll pins used to attach the nameplate. To remove these, I needed to punch one side to push both through the same end. You need to have an especially long punch to do this. Even after taking out the roll pins, the nameplate still would not budge. I suspect the housing on this may have been bent, that caused some binding in the nameplate. I decided to punch the three tapered pins out so I could then punch the nameplate out from below. It was a pain, but I was able to pry it off. Probably should have used some heat to help with this. I don't think it was supposed to be that difficult. As you can see, the nameplate is one very thick piece of aluminum. As for the red stuff in this compartment, I talked with some mechanical experts and the consensus was that this was some very old, dried out copper-based anti-seize. Therefore, when I put everything back together, I'll try to use a similar copper-based anti-seize lubricant. I'll go into more detail on how these levers work later. If we take a look at the driver lever, it's a single piece of forged steel. It looks to have a piece of tungsten on the end of the lever that acts as a hammer as this lever meets the intermediate lever. Next, we'll take apart the spring assembly. There's a single circlip at the end of the wrench. As soon as I took this off, the tension came off the spring. After the circlip is removed, we can slide the entire spring assembly out. Inspecting the spring assembly, I was surprised to see that the calibration was not done by simply changing the position of the red tape, so there must be another mechanism for calibrating the unit. There was a very small amount of surface rest on the latter half of the spring sleeve, nothing really to worry about. One end of the spring sleeve is threaded for the adjustment screw. Therefore, when you adjust the screw, you're actually moving this sleeve towards the front of the wrench which compresses the spring. The brown material on the spring is actually anti-seize lubricant, which hasn't dried out yet, so I'm not even gonna worry about cleaning it off. After we take that torque adjustment screw off, we can see how the unit is calibrated. Down in the shaft is a slotted screw that changes the starting position of the spring. I'm not gonna mess with it right now because I don't have the equipment to calibrate the wrench. There must be some way to remove the hex shaft of this handle so you can access the screw whilst it's still together. I couldn't figure out how to remove it, so I'm guessing you need a special extraction tool that releases the adjustment lever and gives you access to that screw. There's still another piece left in the handle, but to remove this you need to punch out another roll pin that goes into the keyway of the spring shaft to prevent rotation when adjusting the torque. It is surprising to me that a single circlip would be able to hold that much spring force if you set it to the maximum torque level. 
There are a couple of roll pins at the end of the handle that I believe are inserted as a safety catch, but the ones installed were not long enough to engage. I'm going to replace these with a better solution when I put everything back together. So now it's time to start the restoration. I'll put Amazon affiliate links in the description to any of the consumables I used if you're interested in getting your own. For the aluminum body, I used this Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream that works really well when you want to have a nice shiny finish. I used an old toothbrush to get to any of the embossed lettering. It definitely takes a lot of elbow grease, but if you keep at it, you can get a really nice polished finish. I did the same for the rest of the aluminum body and the torque adjustment hammer. The end was so tarnished that I didn't even realize it was brass until after polishing. The drive and taper pins had a little bit of surface rust on them. I gave them a bath and evapor rust for a couple of hours and scrubbed the rust off with a stainless steel wire brush. To prevent them from rusting again, I gave them a coat of Ballistol. Before reassembling everything, I'll give a quick overview of how this torque wrench works. First you have these three levers that transfer the torque load to the small assembly with a rounded surface that pushes on the shaft and then onto the spring. As the spring compresses, eventually the third level will get to a point where it slips and hits the wall of the aluminum body. This is the point where you reach the set torque value. So now it's time to start reassembling everything. I used this Loctite LB8008 copper anti-seize lubricant to replace the dried out lubricant we encountered in, in the main housing. We'll add a little bit of that on the spring for good measure as well. Then we'll put the spring assembly back into the wrench body. For these two spring pins at the end of the handle, I decided to go ahead and tap these and use set screws since the spring pins weren't doing anything the way they were installed. I used a 3-in-1 oil as a general lubricant for the torque adjustment screw and then reattached it to the spring sleeve. I didn't notice this before, but this actually uses a left-handed thread. After that, the circ clip was reattached. The adjustment screw actually moves much smoother now after that cleaning. Some of the surface rust on the sleeve must have caused some additional friction. Now it's time to reassemble the components in the head of the wrench. I first reinstalled the three tapered pins and then added a liberal amount of copper anti-seize lubricant to each of the three shafts. The rest of the components were then added starting from the end closest to the handle. Only the levers on the last two shafts actually have return springs. Therefore when you first start using it there will be some movement in the levers in order to tension everything. Finally, the nameplate was reattached. I had to do this mostly off camera because it required heating up the body in order to get it to fit properly. The six spring pins were then reattached to hold the nameplate to the wrench. Now just to do a test to ensure we can get it to trip, I installed a 9 16 bolt through a workbench and then put a nut and spanner on it underneath to prevent spinning. Setting the torque wrench to the lowest setting of 100 foot-pounds, we can get it to click. Now setting it to 125 pounds, it should take a little bit more force to get it to trip, which it does. The plan is to get some quotes on calibrating this thing, which I'm guessing will be more than what I paid for. If the calibration quotes are too much, then I may just donate this to another YouTuber who was in need of a high capacity torque wrench. You can actually buy a case for this particular torque wrench, but at the current list price of $330, I'll probably just make one out of wood if I decide to keep it. And I may do a follow up video if I decide to get it calibrated and then we can actually put it to some really high torque uses. Well that wraps up this glance at a vintage Ghidorah Dremel meter, which I hope you all enjoyed. If you like this video, subscribe for more reviews of German brand tools.